I never found a day where I really just celebrated at all, even after the natty. I never was pushed proud, like, all right, that's it. It's just when I feel like when I'm in a sport, you know, there's just a time to the time to focus and a time to have fun. And right now it's just a time to focus. You know, right now it's I'm in Texas right now, Dallas, Texas. I just got finished my first workout session. Today's it's a light day today. I actually like it out here. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It's just chill. what do you what do you do like when you're not training? Nothing, literally. But like you know, it's it's it's, it's cool. Though. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's cool people. It's good food spots. My son wastes no time. Once he's done with it, he's done with it. So I didn't even get to get back into Tuscaloosa before he signed his contract and was ready to leave to Texas. Three days after the game, he walked in the door, and we were off and running. You think of Najee Harris, the first time that you, you saw him, he was probably jumping over somebody or running through somebody, right? Um, so, I mean, you, you've, everybody's been watching Najee for years uh, be able to, to be the most prolific running back in Alabama history. So, uh, it, very special to be able to have him here and, and be able to choose our, our facility to train at. It's cool. I like the program because um, it's just they training you from both for both for football and for uh, training for the combine. You know, it's two different workouts. Training for football is the bag drills, the position work that we did, and uh, training for the combine is like all the speed stuff, the jumping. It's like a different training using different muscles. Uh, Naji is coachable from a standpoint of whatever you tell him, he can implement. If you're thinking about pushing through the ground with this foot so much that you rip a hole in the turf. Right? That's going to get that hip moving forward. That's going to help you snap out faster. By the way, whoever saw that, you recorded that? Y'all should pay me about 10 grand for that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's IP right there. There you go. It's good. There it goes. <laughs> Done. Good work. Right now, this is a 20 yard start. It's the 20 yard start. So, uh, this is just the first half of the 40. Um, but this is also the most important part of the 40 because the first 20 yards is really just a digging out phase. And Snap and go. This is going to be a good one. Stay down. 269. Good rep. Hey, that beard fire. You know it, too. Right there? I'm trying to keep my shit like that. My shit is not like that at all. <laughs> the fuck? I still, my shit's still growing. You said, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing for sure. You ain't, you barely hit puberty. So he's been working with Karel Buckhalter, uh, who was a fantastic running back in and of himself, you know, on, uh, on his position work and being able to catch the ball out of the backfield from the quarterbacks that we have here that are on NFL rosters. And uh, so he's done a really good job of, of learning that and, and watching that and being able to get reps in and just find his routine. Um, but when it comes to the strength conditioning, you know, process, this is about being as, as healthy and as fast and as agile as possible so that he can go impress people at his pro day. He's as explosive as some of the smaller skill positions, um, and the same size as you know some linebackers, DNs, you know other positions that he has to go against. So to see him be as explosive as he is at his size is impressive. Someone that big moving past you, it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to get in the way of that. You hate to make comparisons because they're all different in what they do, but I was able to work with Melvin Gordon, and, and I, I feel like. Uh, Najee's a, a, just a, a 15 pound heavier version of Melvin, you know, and um, they both are extremely hard workers and very dedicated to the process. You're never going to catch those guys missing sessions or anything like that. He's locked in, approaches it like a true professional, um, understands, you know, where he's at in this process and how important it is for him to, you know, focus on the important things. Uh, so he's coming in, doing all the little things, coming in early, staying late. He's got a very busy schedule with interviews and all the ancillary things that come with this process outside of our training program. Um, so dealing with that sometimes creates obstacles, but overall he's done everything we've asked of him. My life right now is extremely busy right now, <clears throat> but it's, it's good though, you know, cause it's a good, it's not like, it's not like busy as in like, you know, stressing over stuff. It's like good busy, you know, so. I can't be any more grateful and humble to be in this position. The rules change now, so we don't go. The teams could call us up to five times right now, and that's it. all 32 teams call us up to five times. So it's literally head of meetings every hour. 
the bear texted you? Yeah. I'll just give you my phone to show you all these things. Because I got one with them. And the, the Giants hit me up, said I got one with them. Yeah, the Giants. You have one with the Giants on the uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Oh, I got to be with the Patriots, too. When? Saturday. Okay. I'm going to give you my phone. Here, look it. Just want to confirm our virtual interview time slot of Saturday, March 13th at 5 p.m. Central Time. March but 13th. I, I scheduled one at that time with the Patriots. And then and then the yeah. Bills too. Like I knew uh I knew Coach uh, Dable. He was, you talk to he the was Bills? our well, that was like yeah. that was like last week. I didn't tell you about that one. That was like last week. I talked to Bill, I talked to the Dable and uh Shay. They both went to Alabama. So I didn't want to say, yeah, you gotta talk to my agent. I'm like, damn. And then the uh, Vikings, I mean, I knew their running back coach because he recruited me in high school, and then he knows uh -huh. my trainer. So I was, I didn't want to say, hey, bro, talk to my agent. When did you talk to the Vikings? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I talked to the Vikings like a couple days, like yesterday or two days ago. Like that. So let me book this with you right now. Book what? NFL Network. You want to do it live on Friday, next Friday? It's a Zoom. It's 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. Think about it. What day? Bro, I just said Friday. I don't know. I'll I'll let you know when the when the phone my car stop when the car stops and I can look at my phone. You know. Yeah, because you're texting her. Well, just because I'm responsible, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's other people in the car. That's you know what I'm saying? I'm I appreciate bad, that. You know what I'm saying? I like she's that. a bad like. I'm not human. a bad influence. You know what I'm saying? Just sure. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, dog. I was just I was just trying to be respectful to my peers. When I go on these interviews, I don't even got to prepare type stuff because, like, I already know it because at Alabama they taught me all of it type stuff. So, like, now it's nothing new. It's just different names. But now it's like I can learn like that. Like, we call protections Jack and Jill. They might call it 84, 85. It's the same concept, though. I got the Will to secondary, Mike to secondary. It's just different names. Catch on into like that. I don't even study sometimes. I just, like, he called me saying, New York Giants loved you. Well, they sent me a whole thing of what to do. I didn't even go over it. So I'm going there like just freehanded. Like, nah, they just showing me like, okay, Najee, what is this route right here? I'm like, oh, that's just an option route right there. You got the four man go, keep your shoulder square and read it out type stuff. Like it's all the same thing. So like what I wanted to do in life, that was a perfect school to go to, 100%. The list can go on and on and on about why I think I'm different than other people in my position. Um, one of them I could start with like, okay, well, it's the stereotype that I can't catch. You can't move, you're not elusive, you can't run, you can't pass, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm a bigger back. I mean, I'm not little compared to the other guys, especially too. But if you do see big backs, you do see that they're really stiff, they can't move, they can't catch. They can only just run between tackles, third down backs. I feel like I'm different right there because, you know, you look at the guys in draft now, I'm the biggest guy. Shit, I'm bigger than some of these receivers, tight ends type shit. Like, I'm bigger than everybody. But they don't expect me to move the way I move. Like, every time I hop on a Zoom call, they're thinking, like, I'm smaller than what I am. I'm like, nah, bro, like, I'm all of 6'2", 230, all of it. But really, I'm big enough to also to, to get in there and block big guys. Like, even in Alabama, like, you know, they'll say, all right, Najee, you got the big, and the big is considered a D lineman, 6'4", 280 type stuff. Well, I ain't, by all means, I ain't that big, but, like, I'll go in there and try to just stun his ass because I have, like, you know, I'm big enough in a way to do that compared to, like, a 5'8 back. 5'10 back, it was 200. So, I mean, the list can go on and on. I obviously can run between tackles, that's not an issue, but like fighting for extra yards like that, you know, getting that third and one, can you, can, can you get somebody going there to get that? Like, you know, I'm just trying to like have, there be no options for you to take me off the field. So he's got the gas right now. We're just trying to develop the braking system, right? So helping him get comfortable in end range positions, decelerating and accelerating out of that. So that's been somewhat challenging dealing with some of the uh, injuries he had. I'm gonna go my PT right now and uh, do some rehab on my hamstring and ankle. I think that my ankle uh, in the season mm -hmm. against Notre Dame. So um, it's kind of still feeling, uh, you know, kind of weak, but so I'm gonna come here, uh, PT, do some treatment. You know, obviously he came in a little bit banged up. I mean, you don't, 
you don't have a running back that gets you know that kind of load and carries and that type of yardage and he's a violent runner uh, without coming in with bumps and bruises you know two or three days after the game so he had some situations that our, our physical therapy staff our sports med team were able to work through and uh, and he's done a really good job of, of being able to find some uh, you know some areas of recovery that he could manage on his own he's done a good job of that and he's, he's come a long way during that time yeah, I'm used to it now but it's like like I said this feels like if he turns it up it'll, it'll, feel, really, it'll feel bad I would like to say he's very different. Um, a lot of guys his age are into either like esports and, you know, just, I don't want to say being a kid, but being a 20 year old. And he's rather like, let's go get back to the community. I think that like teams are realizing that his character outshines like what he can do on the field. Like he's, everyone knows he's an amazing football player, but not a lot of people can say that he wants to give, like he wants to give back. He wants to, do what he can in the communities that he impacts. And so I think teams are seeing that and it's showing in his interviews with his character. When we were going through our homelessness, I always made a fact, made it a point that we gave back. Even though we were going through it, we gave back. We volunteered at homeless shelters. I made them volunteer uh, wrapping Christmas gifts for other homeless families. And we're homeless with those families as well. He's always had a soft heart for babies and kids and others that gone, have gone through you know, some type of hard times and struggles in their lives. He's always been that kid to support those. So Najee kept having these kids at my house, and these little boys, but they were little boys, so I couldn't say much because they were like elementary school. I'm trying to figure out why is my son hanging out with these elementary school kids? And he kept bringing this one particular kid over, and he kept bringing them over, and I'm like, what is this about? So I'm listening to Najee and him talk. I'm ear hustling from the back of my bedroom. I'm hearing him talk to the kid, and he's telling him, man, did your ass go to school today? Did you do your homework? Don't be giving your mom a hard time, man. I'm not playing with you. You better be taking your, like mentoring this little kid. And this kid would be at my house just about every day talking with Najee, and Najee getting on him. I was like, look at this. This is my son doing that. That's the beginning of me seeing, oh, he really likes this mentoring thing. He really does. He says, coach, he goes, he goes, he goes what makes you happy? And I go, oh, well, my family, you know, coaching you guys, helping people, um, you know, giving back, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. And he goes, uh, he goes, I want to help people. That's what makes me happy. And I said, I said, that's your goal, then and do it. And that's what he's been doing ever since. But that just a little conversation, I can see the wheels turning and, and uh, you know, it's asking that question. I mean, who does that at, at, you know, his age and he's going through what he's going through and he's just thinking about helping other people. You know, and so nobody else goes through that struggle. Hundreds of volunteers came to Malu Fitness bright and early Thanksgiving morning. Athletes who train here during the week, bringing their families to help their neighbors in need. The volunteers put together about 500 Thanksgiving dinners to hand out to people living in the nearby low-income apartments. The athletes come from schools all around Antioch and beyond, including the nation's top recruit, Najee Harris, who wants this kind of giving to be part of his future. Uh, so my, so my, I, I told myself too before any of this, I told myself like it's always good to give back. So um, yeah, that's something I'll, I'm going to do throughout my whole life. You learn how to overcome so that way you can help others overcome. And I think with him uh, not having a lot and, and, and it just, when you sacrifice when you're hungry, that speaks a lot. You know, because there's a lot of people I know that has a lot that don't even give, you know, and it's not nothing against them but for this kid it's just he's always been that way he would give up their food when they needed food and then, I, then it would come game day or i probably what's wrong with it and then i already knew then i kind of knew he didn't eat that means he didn't eat that means he did something with his food that means he gave his food away like stuff like that uh, and then stuff that we would give him for the house the next thing you find out he gives it to the neighbors or someone else i'm like Okay, what's going on? I say, I know you guys need it. Yeah, so right now we're at the food bank and uh, we're gonna be pack, wrapping up some foods and um, giving it out to people right now uh, in the community. Um, and this is something I usually do though, all the time though. It's not just for the cameras, but that I always do stuff like this. So um, let's go. Hold on, let me do a little boomerang. This is clean, I like this right here. I even got my Alabama picture. I have a good ass smile, don't I? Two. I got like high schoolers. 
yeah. Sophomore. Sophomore? What high school y'all go to? I go to Plano East. Plano East. So is this like a school field trip or something? No, she's going out and volunteering. Oh, amen to you guys, for sure, for sure. I was raised around like, you know, actually I went to a lot of homeless shelters and went to a lot of homeless things to get food. So to be able to help people out, um, you know, to be in, in uh, to help people out with the shoes, I was, I was in their shoes before and you know, stuff like this is important for sure. So, you know, I like doing stuff like this for sure. Like, so my team, my marketing team right now, is uh, I'm signing Marshawn Lynch. His marketing team is Beast Mode, and I knew Marshawn since high school. How would you like me to give you like your title when your name pops up? Do you want me to D put Beast Mode? D A D A D A D D I. D A D D I. Yeah. Like it'll say Marshawn Lynch, and then below that, just D A D D I. Nope. Just D. No. No Marshawn Lynch. Just D A D D I. Underlined it. That's Underlined. Below. Okay. Underlined. All right, like, man. Seriously. <laughs> Marshawn and Beast Mode just came along. I didn't expect a marketing contract. I didn't expect that at all, but I love Marshawn and the way um, he handled his business. So that was more like, well then, yeah, go for it, son. I'm cool with Beast Mode and Washerman all the way around. You know, it's Bay Love, so I'm good with it. You know, we have a, a mutual uh, a mutual folks um, and KP, and he was telling me that, uh, you know, that uh, it was a youngster that played running back. And uh, and he was serving. And when he told me who he was, I'm like, yeah, I checked bro out. I seen him on, uh, you know, toting that tighter a couple times on the, uh, on our little local uh, high school sports channels. Uh, the thing that I like is that the boy, when he got there on the field, he just relentless and ruthless, you feel me? Especially because he be doing some shit that I know for a fact that, you know, I wasn't into and that's uh, leaving your feet. And I mean, you know, he, he tend to enjoy doing that shit, so <laughs> I would say that you know there's some things that you know I really uh, I really appreciate about his game, and so you feel me? I done seen him, you know, uh, doing his thing and hella shit. <clears throat> you know, he was telling me like, yeah, you know, little bro, say, uh, you know, he like your, you know, you like your style and hella shit. He want to meet you, so I'm shit. I'm like, all right, well then bring little family through, having town roots, being from the bay. Then, I mean, it's simple, you know, uh, uh, you know, playing running back, uh, you know, being a dog, making statements with your with your playing ability. It ain't too many motherfuckers that's coming out from where we at. And what I see is a lot of us don't we don't we don't never we don't never come together as one. Yeah. Marshawn, give me advice with everything, though, like um, how the game is how the game is played, how it's supposed to be played, the marketing aspect. Uh, like what, what's a good deal, what's a bad deal um, when it comes with like signing with these companies. Yeah, so this is all Nike and Adidas, they say, oh, and one Jordan box. Uh, they just send me all types of stuff. Really though, it's just hella, hella like boxes of, of like, you know, it's the company really that send me stuff. Yeah, so that stuff comes in literally almost every day. Gymshark, uh, Ethica, some crackers, uh, Beats Juice, Body armor, Mofi cases. Yeah. What's the most craziest one I got? Let me see. One time I got like a like a um, uh, what's that? What's that one game where it's like Caucasian people played a lot? <laughs> it's like a it's like a it's like a, a circle thing and like you you hit it with your hand, racquetball. It could be a lot on your mind if you're sitting there just giving it too much thought. You feel me though? At the end of the day, that shit could stress you out. I believe it's gonna be a, a good fit because I mean, more than anything, like I said, it ain't about no bread with us. It's more so just about making sure that we align uh, align uh, the right situations for him to be successful. I know I'll be a part of you know all of this uh, off the field work within the community shit since we, we kind of share a, uh, since we share a community. You know, I'm I'm big on that. And, uh, you know, that's one of the directions that he he told me when he first reached out to me was that he wanted to get into him. So that's why I said, like, like Marshawn is really like my, like my, like my big my, my big brother in a way. You know, he's just teaching me all the things. You know, he always tell me, like, man, you fucking lucky you got some high life. Like, he, he, he doesn't mean it like that, like, like Kaku. He's like, like, you should be lucky, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I wish I had someone like you to, like, 
to who been through all this stuff right here and, and can like teach you the ropes because mm -hmm. I made a lot of he also like I made a lot of mistakes but that's because I didn't have nobody like to like help me out through his way stuff like that but like you know you're in a good position because you got people who's been there in your shoes before and they can help you out you know what I mean I look out for little bro you you bang my line you feel me don't don't never hesitate to ask to ask me nothing you feel me I think pro day went well. Uh, I did the, I just did position work and routes on there with uh, with Mac and a couple of receivers, and uh, did the position work with a couple teams. And that's really it. I didn't really get any feedback. It was just saying like you know, we want you if you're there. That's the main thing I was saying. Yeah. Nobody's really seen what he's gone through. So for him to do what he's doing, and just a, just a little things, just giving back, and so coming from not much to giving everything, you know, everything he has, um, it's uh, something special, it really is. Just just proud because uh, there's been like hard moments. Sorry. No, you're good. You know, and um, we've we've seen this kid grow. So that night where wherever his name is called, I. I I know the people that was part of the village. I know we're gonna probably act like the way I'm acting right now. But other than that, we're, we're just, you know, I'm, we're happy for him. You know, we're happy for him. I treat that kid like my own son. Uh, even though I did coach him, we did do a lot of mentoring, but it's, he's like family. Um, and like I said, we don't really talk about it. We just know. I can't do nothing but give it up to God, all of us, because it's unbelievable to think what possibly can, is going to happen. And so I, I, before any of all this talking and the recruiting and everything, got to give it up to God because that who's, that's who's been there helping us out through all of this, navigating us through all the hard times and keeping us together as a family, and then giving us the mental status and stability to be able to complete our goals. So I'm, I'm proud of him. It's God all the way. Whatever happens, happens. I hope I hope it's the first day, you know. But man, like, I'm so ready to get work started with the team. It's like, tell me where I'm going, bro, and then let's just get this shit rocking. Download the Milo's mobile app today and receive a free cheeseburger after your first purchase.